Welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT Interviews. Today we're speaking to Jörg Winkelmann. He's the uh, Executive Director for the uh, Centre for CIO Leadership. Uh, so thanks for speaking to us, Jörg, uh, this morning. Perhaps we could ask you what, what the aims of the centre are. Sure, a pleasure, Brian, uh, to be with you here this morning. Um, well, look, I mean, the Centre for CIO Leadership is really a, a global community that was created back in 2006-2007 um, on the basis of uh, an initiative taken um, by the IBM company at the time um, on request of many CIOs that come to our leadership uh, exchanges mm -hmm. uh, asking uh, for us to assist them in what was then already recognized as a discrepancy between what CEOs increasingly were demanding and what they felt comfortable delivering. So yes. uh, the center really, uh, in an essence, is all about uh, working with CIOs, helping evolve their profession, evolve their roles to become more business-oriented, business value-driving executives mm. rather than uh, IT leaders that manage uh, the IT infrastructure of an enterprise or institution. And so tell us a little bit about your role as executive director. So I mean the executive director is really um, the um, you can call it the leader that um, you know convenes the community that uh, um, works uh, with a small team about uh, on the strategy mm -hmm. of uh, the community and uh, um, you know it's it's uh, nothing more than what you have in any organization you need somebody to be responsible uh, sure. for um, the organization and also making sure that it is aligned with uh, the needs of the community which are constantly evolve of course um, so, you know, that's really my role day in, day out, uh, working with the community, working for the community, uh, and working with a little team, making sure that we produce value to the community. So you have a, an international perspective, obviously bearing in mind the nature of the organization that you're in. Can you tell us what some of the challenges are that CIOs are facing right now? Well, I think, you know, they are still the same challenges, I think, that they faced uh, in 2006, 2007, and that is that uh, the demands on them are increasingly coming not just from a technology side mm. but more from a business business process uh, side and from their C-level peers so whether that is a chief marketing officer a chief supply chain officer uh, the chief human resource officer uh, they all have uh, increasing demands on their C-level peer the CIO to provide them uh, with solutions to um, problems that um, you know they face in their organizations I mean if you take the example of the CMO uh, you know most enterprises today uh, worry about how they can actually expand their reach uh, reach their clients uh, better uh, grow the business mm. um, and here and already is one of the challenges of the CIO not just worry about delivering efficient infrastructures uh, and IT services, but uh, be a member of the team that actually drives growth for a company, right. uh, that drives value for their clients. Um, so uh, the challenge then is uh, the CIO doesn't only need to have technology ca competencies and capabilities, but increasingly business acumen and business type of yeah. uh, capabilities. And that's where, for example, the center stepped in, uh, you know, back in 2006, uh, 2007, where we developed uh, what we call a leadership a competency model uh, that describes, and it has actually been enhanced in 2008, uh, again in 2009, um, comprises six uh, leadership competencies that actually have very little, if any, to do with technology, right. but all with, you know, a leadership, a business strategy, business management, risk taking mm. you know one of the things that we are for example working with the community on taking an IT risk thought to more of an enterprise end-to-end -end cultural uh, uh, way of thinking about risk risk management at large for an enterprise that's interesting so one of the debates I know that went on during all that time and probably still is is whether the CIO should be actually at board level uh, is your view that they should be and is that happening well, first of all, you know, I, I was talking about the C-level mm. um, and C-level peers. Um, so as the, the, the chief information officer, yes, I think um, it should be the aspiration of a leader in that profession to be at the same level as their peers. Mm. So in other words, if the chief marketing officer reports to the CEO, 
There's no reason why the CIO shouldn't be reporting to the CEO, provided that he delivers. Uh, right. You know, on uh, some of the things that I was just talking about, and and herein is of course the challenge. Uh, you know, if you're productivity and efficiency focused only and and focused on running uh, so-called IT shops, uh, then you may not be uh, you know at the table, and you know you're normally not granted with a seat at the table. You have to earn uh, that sure. seat at the table, and I think the way you to earn it is through um, you know collaboration uh, with the rest of the C-suite. Um, and um, stepping up to the demands of, for example, uh, CEOs. So in your experience, uh, knowing the community, do you feel that uh, that is being represented very very much more fully now that people are stepping up to that board level and achieving that uh, Well, uh, I think there have success, always been, respect. I think, uh, Brian, there have always been, um, you know, chief information officers that uh, stepped up to that challenge and I would, you know, characterize them as the so-called pace setters of yes. their profession, right? Um, and I think that uh, the, the, the size of the, the pace setter part of the community has definitely increased. Um, but of course, uh, if you look at today's uh, challenges, they have changed. You know, today compared to, for example, 2006, the challenge comes from uh, you know new technology trends, uh, whether that is uh, you know mobile, whether that is social, mm. you know social uh, media means um, that have uh, you know by the way. Um, you know, projected themselves to enterprises uh, beyond the, the technology again. So uh, enterprises are challenged uh, because of what the internet uh, means, what the internet does to them. Mm. Uh, and hence the CIO faces completely new challenges in terms of, again, providing solutions to, uh, to the challenges. I'll give you one example. I mean, um, th the fact that today, uh, you know, there is an enormous explosion around what we call structured and unstructured data coming from all these social uh, devices and, mm. and social networks poses the challenge on the one side on somebody like the CMO to uh, make sense out of this data uh, uh, you know volume uh, you know extract the insights yeah. so that these insights can can lead to um, you know uh, effective growth strategies understanding your client at the individual level what does that mean for the CIO? It means that they have to come up with, you know, analytical solutions uh, that actually delivers to the CMO the value of, of those insights or provides those insights to them. So, you know, that means, uh, you know, um, on one side you have to earn the seat at the table, but you have to actually prove constantly to actually keep it. The, in, the, in the business media at large, uh, there's still a, a sort of conflation between an IT project failing and perhaps it should be a, uh, a business change project that's being referred to. Uh, does that um, sort of merging those two things together sort of damage the CIO, do you, do you feel? Well, I mean, the, the, I think it, it starts actually with um, a, um, a challenge for the CIO uh, that is probably a very old one, and that is uh, uh, the, the traditional CIO has come out of, uh, you know, a technology-oriented uh, mm. education. That means uh, CIOs often or their teams speak a language that others in the in the company or in the uh, institution they work for don't understand. Yes, that is already a problem. Um, so the first thing is um, that CIOs, are, you know, align or adopt to uh, understanding, for example, the language of the CMO, the language of the chief supply chain officer. Now, mm. I would also. Uh, say that those C levels also need to probably better understand some of the technology Absolutely. terms, and yes. I think you know with the generational shift in enterprises that is happening. I mean, the people that come to companies today out of the younger generation that have grown up with Facebook and Twitter and and you know those social networks, they are more familiar with uh, at least uh, you know the social and business uh, side of technology. Yeah. Uh, but I can I think that language issue is is a real one. Mm. Now, once you overcome that, you also need to understand and have a, a natural interest. Uh, in um, really uh, analyzing and understanding the business problem of a peer. Right. And then from that make the bridge to, okay, how can I apply technology or how can I help innovate, very important, innovate processes by applying technology mm. and, you know, uh, help that respective uh, colleague, um, you know, with this or uh, her business problem. Yeah. Now, I think you've given us some very heavy implications uh, for our members as to how one might move into this role, but perhaps you could just give us a few pointers. There's a member watching now, they want to become a CIO. 
right. should they be doing? So I think, first of all, I think we're seeing uh, um, uh, also a trend where CIOs have been appointed, not necessarily coming out purely of the of the technology side of the house. So there are more and more CIOs that actually come from the business. And I think that's a good uh, thing. I think uh, equally it's important for people that come out of the technology community to aspire to roles outside uh, the technology mm -hmm. field. So in other words, if I take the example of the CMO again, I think it's quite healthy for an upcoming professional and uh, you know uh, somebody who aspires to become a CIO one day, maybe spend some time uh, in the marketing department you know, working with some of these analytical problems, mm. uh, working with, uh, you know, challenges of really understanding the marketplace at the, at the individual level, not at a, at a market segment level. So uh, the more I think, uh, you know, you as, an, as a professional uh, reach out, collaborate, and maybe spend some time in other uh, functions that you try to, uh, to work with and serve, I think that's healthy for your uh, career development uh, these days. Because at the end of the day, I think uh, when you boil it down to the, 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 uh, the real essence of most of the challenges enterprises have and institutions, it's, it's all about collaboration. You know, social networks is about collaboration. It's mm -hmm. no longer uh, one way to many, it's you know, many to many. So you need to understand those, those uh, particular challenges coming out of that. So you need to collaborate with uh, the rest of, of your peers mm -hmm. and where and how can you learn that better than going out and maybe sitting on the other side of, uh, yeah. of the table. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, perhaps you could give us a little bit of insight into what challenges you think are coming up for CIOs in the near future. Right. Well, I mean, it's when you um, read the media, you uh, research uh, the internet, you already find a lot of people talking about uh, those challenges. They are, I don't think, very far they are right at the door, mm. uh, at our doorsteps. Um, so one clearly is uh, this explosion of uh, uh, data, so we call it big data, right? Mm -hmm. um, so structured and infrastructure, uh, sorry, structured and, and, and uh, non-structured uh, data. What do you do with it? How do you go about you know, extracting uh, some of the insights I was talking yeah, about get, earlier? Getting some meaning out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the next thing then is of course, um, uh, what do you do with, uh, with this whole um, uh, exploding social environment? You know, many people think that uh, social, you know, whether it's Facebook or, or whatever network, is mostly relevant for, you know, uh, B2C kind of uh, enterprises. Mm. I would argue not at all. Uh, I think it's all about uh, the individual being increasingly empowered uh, to uh, analyze, to influence, uh, and to have an impact on an organization. Mm. The challenge for the CIO out of this is how do I help my organization uh, to manage the risk that comes with it, mm. uh, to uh, you know take advantage of it. We are back to the point of uh, how do I enable my organization to participate in these networks so that your institution and enterprise benefits from it. Mm. So you again see the, the challenges for the CIO are again more on the business side than purely on the technology side. But of course they have to understand you know the technology uh, as such. But um, I think, uh, you know, many people talk about uh, maybe the CIO becomes the chief digital officer of, of an institution in the future. So mm -hmm. anything that happens on the Internet or with, with the digitization and the explosion of data becomes partially a responsibility for the CIO to be in the company. I would argue also to be a partner in driving culture change in an organization. Yeah. To give you a concrete example, I think the CIO should be interested in sitting as a partner at the table with the communication officer and the marketing officer to enable an institution's employees to be actually capable of responsibly interacting on the social networks mm. so that companies can have open uh, uh, and, and, uh, and really um, uh, collaborative governance and not be afraid of what is coming at them. I mean, that's a, there's a huge enablement education effort that enterprises, culture change actually, uh, they have to go through where the, the CIO can play a key role in enabling that. Not just again mm. from a technology side, but also from a process side. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, maybe on this point, Brian, on, on, on enablement. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I can give you a, a real example of, uh, of uh, the IBM company for uh, in this case. Uh, you know, we have started to um, work um, uh, based on the fact and understanding that our brand is primarily experienced out there through our employees. Yes. How do you enable the employee now in the social 
media environment to project the brand in an authentic, responsible, effective way. Mm. So that led to um, a thread of um, collaboration projects between the CIO and the CMO in, for example, enabling people. We wrote together with our employees a very open um, governance around blogging about right. how you, you know go about uh, using uh, networks. Um, we then you know engaged also together on um, basically enabling the subject matter experts of the company to be accessible from the outside. So a mm. lot of people today talk about how do you actually get the value out of an intranet or an internet um, in terms of having access to either intellectual property or people. Mm. So again, uh, you know, that uh, entailed a lot of collaboration with the chief human resource officer. Uh, so we have taken, for example, every of our more than 400,000 employees to some basic, through some basic education that was developed with the CIO office on how you go about, you know, blogs, out on the networks, acting responsibly, but not only responsibly, but effectively for the company so that we generate value, new clients, and relationships. A lot of people are very worried, aren't they, about letting all their employees loose in the social in environment. You're happy to do that with just a light level of well, training? Yes, well, not light level, actually. You, you, we, we are convinced that the more open you can make this, mm. the better uh, it will be to reap the benefits. However, you can only do that if you thoroughly enable the people to act accordingly. Mm. So, you know, just opening the flood gutters is probably a very dangerous, uh, you know, undertaking. <laughs> um, but that w that's why I'm, I'm uh, I think so, uh, I'm emphasizing this point of enablement. Mm. I think both marketing as well as, you know, IT, and you can name any uh, uh, function today, probably underestimates that if you want to participate or drive this culture change for the benefit of your organization, you really have to focus on enabling the individual. As much as we are looking to understand the individual in the marketplace of how they act and yeah. what they want, and, how, and, and we need to enable the individual inside the enterprise and institution to be ready for that. Mm. And, you know, uh, when they go out and blog, you know, understand that they are acting on behalf of a company, of an institution. So they need to understand, you know, the company's values. They need to understand what the brand really stands for uh, and, and what we want to differentiate it around and how it should be perceived and experienced. So they create through that interaction experience that you have to train. And, mm. and it's an on. I mean, it's not just you know, send them to class and it's done. It's a, an ongoing, continuous enablement. That's why I call it enablement, not just education, because it is is uh, going on for life. Mm. Do all your employees get involved in some sort of measure of this then? Um, Twitter and yeah, blogging absolutely. And so on and so on? Yes, I mean, as I said, we basically took them, for example, through a forty-five minutes uh, online education to to teach them the basics before mm. they go out there what they need to uh, watch out for. Mm. And again, that was developed uh, in collaboration with the CIO um, and the marketing department. Yeah. So again, back to my, one of my earlier points, CIOs have to really uh, embrace this this uh, uh, thinking in terms of collaboration. You achieve those things only through very thorough collaboration with mm. the rest of the C-suite. Excellent. Well, now, uh, it's, it's been excellent speaking to you today. Thank you for spending some time with us. Um, people, you, you have a large community. People might want to be involved in it. How, how do they do that? Uh, very easily. I mean, today we are a community of more than 3,000 uh, CIOs and senior professionals uh, from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's, by the way, evenly spread uh, across all geographies and all industries. Uh, we have a public uh, website. You mm. can actually uh, register on it. Uh, it's the Center for CIO Leadership. If you Google that, uh, I'm giving you here the, the uh, precise no, no, HTTP address, <laughs> but uh, you, you find us easily. You can register. Uh, you have to identify yourself uh, who you are, not yeah. necessarily for which organization you work, but you know if you are a CIO or a C, uh, an IT professional or somewhere, somebody else. And then uh, we welcome you, um, and uh, you have access to the wealth of... Uh, um, intellectual property. We do a lot of research. Uh, by the way, I should say we work together with academic partners, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like uh, you know, major uh, business schools and and universities around the world. Uh, really, always again, uh, with the scope and focus on trying to help the CIO profession evolve. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and you know become 
a more effective and successful uh, business player. Well, Jörg, thank you very much for speaking to us today. My pleasure, Brian. Thank you.